Yep. I got a little girl for a daughter. Before before we start, You're not helping him. <laughs> good things are meant to be shared. I got a wonderful gift from Gene. Yeah. No, this is a buffalo jerky that he prepared. Yeah. And it's excellent. Yeah. And uh, families should share their best. Oh, that's right. So thank you, Gene, for sharing your something you made with us, and it's delicious. We'll pass it around. Everybody take a piece. This is uh, the equivalent of our smoke. That's it. Instead of passing the pipe. <laughs> it's, a, it's, not our, it's not our smoke, it's our eat. It's very good. Gene, Gene gets that from a local butcher shop where they actually raise their own bison. Uh -huh. oh, really? Doug took me to the butcher shop in Clayolum or in Roslyn. Oh, oh my yeah. gosh. Okay. Been there a long time. Yeah, right? How years? Derek's has probably Old been, as me. been there 80 years. Or right? mm -hmm. Oh, good. He's been experimenting with how to season it. Mm. Wow. Good. Mm -hmm. It is good. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. So, what do you guys think? Mm -hmm. It's got to start somewhere. All right, well, first I'll say congratulations, you guys. We did it. <laughs> yeah. But we learned a lot. Well, I felt like at least it came to a con some kind of resolution and conclusion. We all got got everything off our chest that we wanted to get, I think. I, unfortunately, the system kind of doesn't allow everything that's fair, but by the same token, at least we made a shot. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to share with you guys, um, since we stayed after, I actually spoke with his wife and James for like a half hour. Um, and I actually <coughs> had a really healing moment and really powerful in that, you know, in it, one, it, it, outright you know his wife was was pretty enraged about him being made to look like a monster and she said he's not the monster aspect of i said that was our our job though to represent clara and and from the facts we were given mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. is this is the path and the trajectory that went down um, so she was still upset yeah rightfully so in my opinion um he he did share he actually shared what had happened um and I definitely do think he was following too closely, but he said he got passed by the other writers and Clara. They took the corner. She went to take the corner and they said with that little dip, you can't necessarily see the cars coming when Clara hit the brakes. Of course, he didn't say he was too close, but obviously he was. Motorcycle can stop. He couldn't stop. According to him, he said he actually did swerve when they had their expert witness look at his truck. He said it was at a 12 degree. Mm -hmm. He said, I did try to swerve. I did hit the brakes. He um, did? He said that afterward, he was the, I believe he said the first one to get to Clara, that he actually sat with her, that he started CPR on her. Um, then Sparky, and I know some of the others took over as he said in his statement he then ran to the hill made the whatever 30 calls to dispatch um, when the EMT and he, he shared a lot of this where he's he has really been violated equally by the system um, he said having a, a CDL license legally they need they were required by law to test him for blood alcohol and sobriety testing within 48 hours of the accident um, he knew that fact, having a CDL as well as Clara did. Um, he said Trooper Conway, you know, same thing, showed up about two hours later, did not want him tested and said, no, I don't think you need it. And he said, and they, he actually said he got pretty heated with Conway and said that I want this to be on camera, that it's your choice to not test me. Um, they agreed verbally agreed to have their truck removed as we started talking we are actually starting to think that the reason that truck was released out of evidence and totaled 
as quickly as it was, was because they said uh, that the trooper had actually taken the Sawzall and demolished their truck. The insurance didn't even physically look at their vehicle. Um, they just totaled it because of what had been done by them getting the black box out. Um, interestingly, he's, um, this is our third district attorney, right, on this case. It was Mr. Montgomery's fifth. Um, his attorney ended up sharing off the record that this particular office has a big issue with their district attorney, um, which we have seen. Was, had the district attorney walked away when you guys were talking? Uh, or, yeah, was right. Ibsen was not Sorry, in not there. His, his, his attorney. No, his attorney was there the whole time. She, so she heard the whole conversation. She heard the whole conversation, and the bailiff was in there at the at the back as well for, for most of that until they saw that. Is the bailiff the guy in uniform? Yeah. Yeah, yeah the court well, officer. Each other, but yeah, he was going to protect us. Yeah. Um, so the more they started to share, um, but, you know, ultimately he said, he goes, I've wanted to talk to your family and let you guys know this. He said, as, as a father, as a brother, as a son, he goes, it has torn me up that I haven't been able to share this with you and he said you know and i have not until today been able to have a voice in front of the judge aside from yes ma'am no ma'am etc but that's obviously the judicial system and how it's set up um i said I, I can only imagine the frustration and rage and sadness and all these things that w must have been for you that it's been a year and a half and at least we could talk through this process he's had to just stuff it and accept everything that's being thrown at him that a lot of it was not actual or factual um trying and to i think at the beginning we wanted to hear that he was sober we wanted to hear yeah. all those things as part of our healing and then when we didn't get it is when we got angry yeah yeah because it wasn't we started out being very compassionate toward yeah him. yeah you know that's... find out he has a kid and you know all these things and, yeah. and that's what we wanted to but the system made it violating to kind of who we are. Yeah, so he did say, he goes, I was 100% sober. Um, he said, I was not on a cell phone. In fact, he goes, I, one of those rednecks, he goes, I only have a cell phone because of my work and my kids. He goes, otherwise I wouldn't have one. Mm -hmm. um, he's like, I'm not somebody that's on there playing games or doing that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, and he just said, it is an unfortunate, just the timing of, what was the, the exact time of the incident? 4 o'clock. Well, they, don't, they can't, they don't actually know. Four it was incident? around 4. 4 of um, four of 1, 4 of 2. Oh, did he, said it was did they talk about how far he drove that day? When did he get up? And how much beer they all drank the night before? Because alcohol can stay in your system. Yeah. Good 24 hours. Well, I thought the interesting thing I heard earlier today was, and his mm -hmm. lawyer was saying, that the control cruise control was on. Uh, did anybody else catch that? I did. He said that there was a recall. On the cruise, the cruise control. Cruise control. Um, oh, so there's actually, there could be a case for us against G Ford. Yeah. yeah, something about they brought up the cruise control piece of it. Um, Rach, how did the conversation start that you went over and just talked to her? Oh, I just went over and said, may I approach to the attorney. Yeah, because we just been told we were about to kill him in the parking lot. <laughs> and uh, I just said, may I approach? And then I said, I don't, I don't know if you were the wife or relative of Mr. Montgomery. And, you know, and she was still pretty upset at that point. And I, she said, I'm his wife. And I just said, her, I would like to just talk for a few moments if you're willing. And she was, I mean, she was pretty livid still at that point, you know. You made him out to be a monster. He's not a monster. He's a good man. He's a kind man. He maybe hasn't done all the the level of things Claire has done, but he's done equal things. And so we had a good talk about that. And like I said, I apologize for that. And then said, you know, I said, at no point <coughs> have we thought of him as a monster. I said, I 100% hear and can see how it has been portrayed that way. But for us, we have not thought of him that way. And I said, from what he shared today, I believe we have the same heart. That we have the same, you know, vision and, and how we try to be in the world. Um, I said, so I'm sorry for the pain and suffering that our family has brought to yours because of this process and how we have, you know, 
brought it forth in the court. And this is when Dad was in the back talking to Mr. Walker. Yeah. Came out. Yeah, oh. and then yeah, and then he came out after, and then we then we talked more. Um, he, I mean, and as a family, I mean, they they've equally been victimized. So he was saying all of these times when it got pushed off, it was because the district attorney, whatever number one, two, three, four, or five was at the district attorney's office, that they did not have their ducks in a row for the items that, you know, the prosecution needed for the defense. And so they had to keep deferring and deferring and deferring. So their lives have been in equal um, disarray. Unfortunately, like as he was saying, uh, in the, he said in the state of Colorado, when you're involved in a fatality like this, both drivers, like if Clara had been from Colorado and survived, both drivers lose their licenses. I did not know that. You, that the first you start from scratch. Even so though you got hit from behind? Doesn't matter. And so he said, um, oh within 30 days, like you have 30 days and then your license, it's like revoked. So it, it was seven days after the 30 days that his wife was opening the mail and got a notification that his license was, you know, totally gone. And she called him and she said, are you driving right now? And he said, yes. And she said, you need to pull over. Your license is revoked. He had to call his boss and have them pick him up and yep. no longer drive his truck. So he yep. does mobile mechanic and drive semis to check him and stuff. Yep. He then had to go back to MVD, retest like a 16 year old, take his test, take his driving test just to get his basic license. Um, he said he could eventually go back and get a CDL or the motorcycle, but at this point, And I felt like to. that, when he said that, I was like, that was that one box that we wanted to check. You know, like, I felt like he was saying it, even though we had asked as a family between us. Yeah. I don't think we ever verbalized it in court. Mm -mm. But yeah. for him to say it was like, okay, that took care of that piece that was like an open wound for us. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I, I like blubber start crying then and I was like oh, how do I stop like when he said he wasn't driving I was like okay that that thank you I needed to hear that mm -hmm. but they I mean they've had a rough go and remember the hearing he came in wheeling himself in and we were like what the heck is yeah, that about making it up. evidently they have horses and other animals and he got bucked off and stepped on and his leg broke in eight places oh god so I mean, they've had a, a rough so go. It wasn't pretend. It wasn't pretend. And, you know, and obviously they've had the financial stress of when he lost his CDL license, he lost his job. So he, for him, he said this was the very first week that he has had has been able to secure a job and go back to work since the crash. Um, wow. And that's high stress, you know, like his wife said, yeah. And, and obviously with four kids and then she said, we've got all these animals and we're trying to figure out do we have to sell them because we can't feed them, you know. So they've had a crazy time, but the more he shared, it's mind blowing to me the level of victimization they have gone through because of the system and specifically Trooper Conway's actions, as well as the district attorney's actions. Um, I mean, it is violation after violation after violation. It, at this immediate time, I have no desire to take this on but we actually started to talk and even with their attorney um i said man this this is a serious civil suit against the state of colorado um, there you go. That's the worst and there i can't fathom how many families are being victimized because of this they did say and which goes with the research i had found not only conway but his superior officers have also been fired hi so lubis Really? Not Lubus. Lubus was okay. there today, but some oh. some higher up officers have been fired. Oh, so there's they kept him working. There's a lot of components in there of, and sometimes the first to, I we might not be a litigious family, but sometimes the first to get something on record right. in the court system is the best mm -hmm. because once everything starts to fall, then you become last place so i yeah. don't know it's just it's, it's just wouldn't that wouldn't the irony in it be that something done together well I mean, yeah and so they they said 100 percent um they said if you they go if you guys want to move forward with that they said we will give you everything we have wow. um and i 
which I was appreciative of, I said, but I said, well, if we made that route, I said, I would be willing to take lead, but I said, I would want to file that as a dual party because, mm -hmm. wow. I think that has a lot of well, teeth if it's dual well, party. You know, because of what has really happened. For how ugly it is, there's so much beauty in something like that. Right? And, and, you know, and it might also open up a whole class action lawsuit. Well, so I families. wonder if the cruise control problem, so now you're starting to get the Ford involved. So the cruise control, because there's shenanigans going on behind the scenes. There's money being, like, you don't know what, if Ford has already been here talking to Colorado State Patrol, like offering them things to keep this uh, out of the courts and Because silent. my cousin, who's the instructor for the mm -hmm. Highway Patrol, said, Camille, there's money being passed. Here. Yeah, there's. I think Ford's already been here in town. Mm -hmm. oh. And then additionally, um, in case nobody else heard, I did right before Ibsen ran out the door, I, I did grab him just to thank him for what he has done in the case and, you know, and his part in the judicial system. And I said, I, I realize I roasted you pretty severe. <laughs> um, <laughs> I said, I want you to know, we, we do see your good heart. We do see the effort you have put in. I said, and there are these, these issues that I said, I needed to present these so that future families maybe don't have to go through the same thing. What did he say? Um, Took her hand and ran. ran. <laughs> pretty much. He, yeah. literally he was like pulling away. Did you ask him, uh, does he sleep in his suit? <laughs> I I think something's off. I think he's got he's, cancer or something. I, yeah, 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 something he looked bad. And every time he was walking, he had his hand in his hip. Yeah, yeah I can yeah, see when he went sad. He oh, was yeah. on a bicycle and and hit by a car. Yep, fifteen years ago. A while ago, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. so just my my heart aches for everybody. We're all human, I guess. Yeah. So, I, I, I had a, a chat, Mr. Montgomery, just eye to eye, you know, and it, 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 it and then both families have had a tragedy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've, we've lost a daughter and, uh, uh, you know, we've lost a sister and et cetera, et cetera. But at least we have peace that, you know, in, in terms of our relations with each other and, and we don't feel any guilt in terms of something that will linger that we did for the rest of our lives. Right. He will have that for the rest of his life, yeah. Yeah. you know. Um, when I was in law enforcement, there was one event where I, I almost had to shoot a man and I still have nightmares about it. And I have friends that have shot people because they had to. And never forget it. They cannot get over it. It's like the ultimate taboo yeah. is to kill somebody. And unless you're a psycho, you never get over the scar of killing somebody. It stays with you forever. So we have the luxury of moving on in a sense. He does not. He is not a psycho. Yeah. He's a human being that made a mistake. Yeah. And he's going to have to live with that for the rest of his life. And, and, it, and when, I was, when he came in, I mean, he was literally kind of in tears when I started talking with him. And he says, I have, you know, I'm a father. Mm -hmm. And he says, I can't imagine the pain of losing one of my kids. Mm -hmm. He says, that's, that's your pain. He says, and, and I have to live with the pain that I took your kid away. And how would I feel if somebody took my kid away, you know? And he says, we've had to go through stuff in the system just like you had to, and I've had some of the same frustrations. Uh, he, he said, you don't have the luxury of calling all your shots with a defender public defender or with the prosecutor. And he says, the, we have not felt comfortable with the system either. And every night, he says, I've had to go to bed. I have had no peace 
in terms of that I have been able to resolve this with your family. He says, you couldn't come and directly talk to me. I couldn't come and directly talk to you because if the system worked like it was supposed to work and nobody knew till the very end that how it was gonna unravel, he says, the prosecutor and the defense attorney do the talking. As soon as you have the private parties talking to each other, everything's out the door. So he says, you know, I've had to live with that every single day that how you must view me and my family as like monsters. And he says, we're not. We're, we try to be decent. He says, I've had a job. I've tried to love my kids. He says, hey, I'm a human being. He said, and, and I've had felt, uh, you know, for the last year and a half, the same pressure in reverse of what you've had to feel, you know. And so, but he said, as, as one father to another, he said, I want, I have, I want to look you in the eye and, and just tell you that I, how, how sorry and what, you know, I can't, re, I can't return your daughter. I will live that with the rest of my life, he says, and, and I'm so very sorry about it. Now, well, what can I do? But, you know, and I says, all you can do is, is live your life uh, as best you can, you know, and hey, I, I don't think he, I don't think he is a bad guy. Yeah, did he maybe, was he maybe partially drunk? Maybe so. But who of us, honestly, have not had at least one time where we haven't gotten behind the wheel that we should not have been behind the wheel? And we can't prove that he was. He could have just been sloppy, and, and that was the stuff. But the bottom line is, I know I've had moments in my life where I wasn't 100% paying attention, and whatever it was, something was on my mind, or whatever it was, and for that split second, I've had numerous times in, in almost 80 years of life where I can say, boy, I came so close, and I've never had to put myself in Mr. Montgomery's situation, because I, I skated, I got away with it. And he didn't, you know. But I think, I mean, after my conversation with Ms. Montgomery, we gave each other a big hug. I am done with anything going after that family. If my issue is with the law enforcement agency, not with Mr. Montgomery. <coughs> and, and I have to, like, say up front, if in the process of, I think we should try to pursue something against it on the principle in terms of going after an agency to set a principle. But in terms of, if in the process of doing that, we have to go after the Montgomery again, count me out. No, no, I look at it and I say, it is done. Uh, when, I gave, when we gave each other the, uh, a hug and we looked eye to eye, the hatchet was buried forever between Montgomery and me. He was just another human being that had a terrible thing happen, and he's going to have to live with it. So anyhow, I felt he was very sincere in, in the conversation I had with him. He wasn't trying to cover things up. He wasn't trying to say, uh, he, he, he wasn't defiant. This is a man who all of us, who just, you know, he was up against it. And and I thought his response, and it took a certain amount of guts at this point yeah. Yeah. to come forward and say, I'd like to talk to you man to man, yeah. eye to eye. He did not have to do that. You know? Um, so that, I had no bones to pick with Mr. Montgomery. When you were talking at the podium the first time, he turned his head to look at you, and it wasn't because he planned to. It was because he naturally just connected with you. He respected you. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. so, Plus the things that you have Anyhow, said. My, my, my bone to pick is with the system, not with Mr. Montgomery. And that gives me peace, because I think that's what we always wanted. And then 
to find out, but it, to validate this kind of crazy circus I keep calling it was. Well, this know, should have been done a long time ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and to know that they were yeah. on the same circus we were on. Well, if you mm -hmm. listen to the judge, she was suggesting. I don't know how many times. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think at least seven times <laughs> she talked about possible other actions uh, and it's beyond my, you know, level, blah, blah, blah. She but was pointing a finger. Go for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because she felt frustrated. Yeah, not to go after each other because, like you say, Both victims, mm -hmm. both both sides were victims. And it's interesting when I first heard the story of what happened, like I I got almost felt like I was in the presence of Mr. Montgomery. Like I could see what he had gone through and like imagining a kid. Yeah. I think yeah. I think it was the connection when I heard there was a kid in the car, yeah. and then I instantly thought of him yeah. as a driver, and and I haven't felt that in this whole thing until now again. Like that I. Oh my God! I feel because we were told instantly he was definitely sober, and and then to feel that again because I was like, oh my gosh, how horrible this and to have a kid in your car, and then then to go through that whole process at the end back to there. Mm -hmm. What I would like to do going forward, and I had thought about this all along, but something that I would even do individually, but hopefully as a family is to really get the laws changed in all of the states with the technology and stuff that we have. If there is a death involved, to automatically do the, the test, that, that that should be in all of the patrol cars, and that especially someone who's trained to do the research we have to have a and warrant. that isn't a law that it yeah. has to be taken. It's to the officer's discretion. Yeah, you know. That's, yeah, that's state by state though. And mothers against drunk driving said they would be willing if that's something they want to fight for. I mean, I personally am going to pursue that, possibly nationwide. I mean, I'll we'll start with one state at a time. Yeah, it's the same thing in Arizona. Yeah, because had we had that one piece of information earlier, oh, this on, case would have been done so long ago. Right? He just would have. We wouldn't have had our angry. Yeah, well, this case was. It would have been done a year and a half ago. Would have been done. Months. I wouldn't have no, written that I, letter. Yeah, we really brought the fire once. Once you know, and I shared that with the Montgomerys. I said, "Man, we went from being told this to the yeah, absolute opposite," and they said that really changed our opinions of the case and where things were at and. And how we had to approach that because of it, and and he said, yeah. And he goes, and on his end, he said the reason he have, he actually was self representing, and it got to the point that after like the third DA, they said you've just got to get you've got to get one because every time he would go in, the new prosecutor they would say, oh, I haven't read this case yet. They would know nothing about it, even the one that he had today. She's like, well, I just got this case today. Remember? <laughs> she was like flipping through, and I'm yeah. like, she sucks. Who was that but, sleepy? No, the it's the, no, <laughs> he's the one that he has now, but he didn't get her for like like five months in. Yeah, but he's had her for now since the, since the yeah. first day. But up until that point, <laughs> like, She's every crazy. time he would show up, there would be an, a new prosecuting attorney who hadn't read anything about it. He would have to re try to hash. I mean, it was just the circus where then they'd postpone on him for months and months and months. And then obviously for their family to not know, is he going to go have jail time? Is he... You know, like all of those parameters of, I mean, it's it's crazy. But the stuff they shared, like he even was saying how the whole thing for dispatch, he, you know, he said he had made the over 30 calls. He, he goes, between everybody, there was probably 100 calls that were tried that were tried to be made. And his wife actually shared, she had an incident even like a, two weeks ago where she had a friend, there was a drunk driver, and they were calling into dispatch. And same thing, they were getting bumped, 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 bumped. So there's, I believe that. there's all these issues in there, but then he was saying even, yeah, when the first responders, which I yeah, think I guess came even, up, yeah, when they, were they didn't have the, the, the gear they needed, um, obviously yeah. all the violations of, he said they were just chit-chatting around versus actually separating the driver from the friends, from, you know, to actually do a proper investigation. There's so many 
protocol discrepancies that how powerful would an investigation if we went together would it take a long time though Oh yeah, I mean, but think would, about Clara. It would be a very would, long fight. What, what would Clara do? It's worth it. What would Clara? <laughs> she, she'd she'd go in she, with everybody. <laughs> she'd take a thousand people. She you knows. know, I mean, right. so that's that's where you know I said, obviously at this point I said I know we're all absolutely got exhausted. The last thing we probably want to do at all is to jump back into the legal system. But I, <laughs> I but they said they were actually willing to be in communication, and I said. I'm going to take this month to kind of pause and tackle a little more probate, but I said I'll kind of sit with that um, and maybe reach out to a couple of the attorneys that are spoken to that'll, that are attorneys in Colorado. And then let them know that they would be part of it and see what they say. They might just jump on or something like that. Take a little time. Yeah. But, but so I, I told them I would just at least touch base or reach out in March. Um, but at the end of it, I mean, I was really grateful that I had taken that time, that I feel like they heard me, I heard them. Um, yeah, when it comes down, it's like this system, which I think still has validity. Um, there was just too many players in here that were shady, <laughs> shady dealings. Uh, and with hearing that upper people in state patrol are potentially fired as well, you know, I think there's some bad, bad apples in the, in that pie. Well, yeah. who's investigating them? Well, supposedly they are starting an internal investigation with what Aaron kind of internal. launched. Yeah. No, this went all the way to the Colorado Bureau of Investigations. Yeah. I got a in investigation started. So it's not internal then? It's uh, external to the internal. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. It's there's both, a, external and... There's a PI who's off of this. What do we... Oh. What does everybody, everybody need left, like, to, to, to move forward to heal? Do you need... I think, are we in a place where we can just kind of... I need to talk to Montgomery. I need to apologize too. So, I should have been there. I, I didn't realize you were. No, it's going wrong. I, yeah, but you, you know were, me. I would have liked to. When I found out that you'd been there for a half an hour, I was like, I want to be there. That's probably probably best. So it might have been a bit. I much. love how Mr. Ipson was the one baiting Aaron. I'd like Aaron Delatory to be the speaker, <laughs> right? What's that guy? Mr. Ipson at the last. Sleepy, the sleepy. last year. The last hearing. Every time he goes to talk to somebody, he talks to somebody different. Uh, I noticed that. He did not call Rachel uh, Clara this time. I thought that would be Yeah, right? Yeah, I know, yeah. Every first, time he calls her. First time he hasn't called me Clara. But yeah. Could yeah. you tell me who the police officers were um, the in court today? Were they at the scene? They no. no. One was Matt uh, Matthew Lubes. He's Sergeant Lubes that Aaron and I have talked with a bit. Um, mm -hmm. He's, I was going to say hi to him, but then I was kind of like, well, I'm kind of still mad at you. officer above uh, Trooper yeah. Conway. And then the other guy, I'm forgetting his last name right now, but Ray, he, Ray is the guy that Aaron had talked to Ray. on the phone. And he's oh, the last one? Lieutenant Colonel. So he's, oh, okay. a, he's a second in command. There's three lieutenant colonels okay. uh, under the head guy of Colorado. Oh, shit. I so, walked up to him and I said, I was like, um, were you the troopers on the scene? Both of them said, no. Oh. I said, oh, okay. Well, why are you guys here? <laughs> I said, oh, we're representing the state troopers. We're here just representing you. Represent I said, did you know Conway? Yeah. And I just said, hmm. <laughs> <laughs> You're just such a tall <laughs> presence. He kind of did the native, you know. He knows how to do that. Um. <laughs> so, Mom, so, like, Aaron, Aaron the... Uh, that you know those credit card things that and they're both like this and I'm standing right beside <laughs> See, you know those uh cards that we have with Claire's boxing pictures yeah so mom went up with with one for each of them and handed oh, it oh nice and, and cool you and leaving the were, thing were, on the microphone was brilliant they, oh thank you yeah Tony rewrote it for me but those were my words, but when I handed the card to him, I said, um, this is from the family. We just want to thank you. This is the woman that you're representing. Yeah. And they were really touched. And when I went back to get the other card, the one that had the first one, was still standing there looking at it, and he was all choked up. And then the other one was glad to get his card, too. You know what I found just absolutely amazing could not have been planned? Every single person that talked today brought something different 
that wasn't planned, wasn't prepared, but was perfect timing. Right. Like when Ruben even got on, I was like, Ruben, what are you doing? <laughs> or when, when Robin got up there and like clarified, clarified statement of the charges that were, I'd like to just clarify this is now, you know, without death or what, or like however she did it. It was just, right. it was just, nobody could have written a perfect script for, 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 for a show that was so screwed up so over screwed the last up. 18 months, right? Yeah, because each mm -hmm. person that got on and talked was, it was beautiful what they brought. Yeah, and right it, it really did feel like it hit all of the, the it, parts. It, 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 every, like we it, it, it got every it, we went all the way around the ballpark. Yeah, we went out of the park. Everybody <laughs> just threw uh, Ipsy under the bus, too. Oh. <laughs> every once in a while, you just see Ipsy go, oh, give me I felt so <laughs> bad where you said, what do you say, stop? Stop yelling at me. Yeah, yelling he, at all day. yeah, he said, please stop yelling at me because I've been yelled at all day now. <laughs> Kai, when he was called to the back principal's oh. office. I mean, I, in my uh. heart, I didn't feel bad. I really didn't feel bad for him. But I, but I, and I even told that to my comrades after, even with stuff that I brought for them. I said, you know, I said, I, I know a lot of stuff that came out was pretty harsh. I said, but you know, I said, a lot of things I even brought forth weren't necessarily my opinions. But I said, just as the prosecution or DA, I said, I was re representing thousands of people that had all come to me with their thoughts or their feelings and what they wanted brought to the court. And I said, it, it was uncomfortable for me a lot of those times to, yeah. to say that stuff. That's yeah. not what I would have said just as Rachel, necessarily. Um, but, I, want, so. I wanted to sh share something that I kind of smiled at. Um, in that one part that I was talking about how Clara could have easily been a wonderful president of the United States. Yeah. And when I said, she even, and I looked right at the judge and I said, and she really, and she had the financial backing for whenever she was ready. Her former boss was there and he was the one who said that to her. And I didn't know that he was on Zoom. Mm -hmm. Just, hey so Rachel. Was part, there was that connection. Mm -hmm. And then there was one thing that I didn't say that I kind of wish that I had, but it, it didn't matter. But it pertained to, to him, is that at one time, she was ready for her yearly evaluation with her boss and was getting a very large bonus. And she said to her boss, instead of giving it to me, you, why don't you use that for the people that are working with you, for you, even though you pay them well, um, they don't have medical and they don't have um, um, any retirement. And, um, you know, and then he followed up with it. But she cared for the, these people. And that, her, she came, that, part of Clara came out, but I really wanted to say that. And then since he was on the line, I wish that I had, mm. you know, just as a way to acknowledge him without him, without directly pointing to him. So mm. I don't know if there's somehow there is beauty in all that. Um, right? <laughs> I think <laughs> what Rachel was saying about uh, that's mm -hmm. the information being flipped back and forth as a result of a lot of incompetence confused everybody. The DAs, all three of them, the judge, right? Mm -hmm. Guilt on one side, yeah. anger on the other because you're led to believe this or that, the trauma. I mean, I know I'm not the family, I'm Robin, I mean, <laughs> Rachel's. Close friend. Yeah, you are. And, well, you just admit it. But I, you are. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Thank you. But uh, what uh, what I was trying to the point I was trying to make is when you talked about that trauma, what it did. You and I were joking about doing. I said a ball peen hammer to the kneecaps, and you said. <laughs> They do other things in Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> Joking, you know, of course. Yeah. 
we're not ever going to do violence and we don't have hate in our hearts. You can't. You yeah. just can't until you said it again and again, until the facts, whatever ones can fall into place and they haven't done that yet. And I think that is a raison d'etre for your family and their family to go after not the system so much, but the failure of the system. You know, because all systems are screwed up, one reason or another. I think our criminal right. justice system, and you could speak to that best, being uh, in the force for so long. I think one of the biggest problems has been the legal system, the laws that are on the books. They never take the old laws off the books, and there's so much confusion, you know, and loopholes for the lawyers and the people, you know, on the defense and offense, as I call it. Right, so what you're going to find out about your car, you know, because the tow truck guy wants to talk to you. Oh, already. What you're going to find out is that they took a Sawzall to it. There's, because the person who signed off for it wasn't the judge. It was that, no. and that person who did sign off on it got fired. Somehow Ford is involved in this, and the tow truck driver knows it too. Uh, I bet that's what he wants. That's why he wants, now it makes sense. Because the tow truck driver wants to talk to you. It's because he knows something. How about the cleaning of the shop? Well, I mean, Not to, Tony and I have been, like, the tow truck driver, we've been in contact this whole time. He's, he has been, like, family. Yeah. Um, and checking in. and More, more so, it, it's making sense to me if that release went through because the protocols of the documents that needed to be signed or whatnot didn't happen from Colorado State Patrol that they wanted that. But that car was not that car was worth more money than it would have cost to fix it. It was a two thousand dollar repair, three thousand dollar repair. Yeah, that's it, so. Weird. But they, but they, de they, they crushed that that truck. They crushed. Do you guys get that they crushed the fifteen thousand? The evidence. The evidence. I hadn't heard that they had crushed it. Just that. Well, you just it said it had been released. It had been the released. Black box. Was he, is crushed? They, I just no, the heard... black box. No, the black box was taken out, and then the truck was released. But what the Montgomery said was that insurance never came to do the appraisal on it because oh. with the whole sawzall thing that happened, they just had to total it. They couldn't sawzall. I mean, to get the black box get the black was box underneath box some seats. Yeah. So he's saying that the truck was messy because they had they had to move things around yeah, to get the black box we're, out. We're, we're talking about it. He also yeah, said the garbage it. that was in the front came from his the back. Yeah, which accident. it wasn't. It definitely it wasn't. He it. also said, there was also something else that he said. Oh, his frustration, he goes, he goes, I hate the fact that it made me look bad that I stormed out of here, but I was yeah. frustrated oh. with the system. Oh, that's good, oh, yeah. Good. I he said, I was frustrated with, when, because we saw him on video when he, when he went he out, because he said, he said, uh, he said, I forget your sister, and, she, and the wife said, yeah. oh, Heather. Yeah. Yeah. Heather said he stormed out, and he goes, he goes, I did storm out. And he goes, and he goes, and with my, you know, his disorder, whatever, he said, I will sometimes show sadness and cry, or I'll get to the max where I get really frustrated. He's like, so you, you saw me. He goes, I was, I was in rage right then. He goes, but it wasn't a frustration at you guys. It wasn't a frustration. It was that, that what was being put on him in regards to the system that they kept postponing on him. It was just being dragged out even farther. It, that added that a whole was the first year. time he was in court. When he uh, started that. No. It was the first time we were physically there. He, he had there. been in court for, yeah, more than we are. Does anybody know what that other charge was? The earlier one? They didn't talk oh, about Oh, the one from eight years ago? Yeah. yeah. What was it? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, he's well, sure. Rach, I think I support moving you just moving forward with whatever you need to as a family. I don't think I ever need to come back to Canyon City. <laughs> but I was joking. I said I'm gonna come back. I'm gonna go get my attorney's license and come back and be a prosecuting attorney at this courthouse. <laughs> <laughs> I said I'd love to work with that Judge Roback. She's great. <laughs> she's <laughs> she's <laughs> Aaron, no, Aaron's got a crush on her. You tell you. She's great. You let her know I thought that. she was great. Is she single? <laughs> I thought she was fair. Aaron got turned on when she got mad and stormed out. Oh. 
Yeah. She has real like, nice shoes. She's got real <laughs> nice legs. Okay, she she looks like a runner. Like <laughs> She's got kids. So she said her kid gave her COVID. Oh, her her kid, we know all about hey, her. Hey, Heather, her kid was in on the bench in the clerk next door, the redhead, oh, the little girl. Her That's her, her daughter. Oh. Whoa. I went back and handed her the earphones. <laughs> Well, because this is a big case, so like, yeah, she probably had her daughter come in yeah, cause she was sitting to in the sit bank. with the clerk. I didn't see the two that were up there. Uh oh, oh yeah, she was sitting in the back. Well, I think mm -hmm. that I have peace and resolution, and we can like postpone our anger for a month. I think. <laughs> I think I think we there has to be a time where we just kind of call it. I still yeah. want to and see if we need it to. Soon. Yeah, if, if you we need to explode, if you're going to move forward with a civil suit, you only have till June. Yeah, right. and um, I think the yeah. private eye that Stefan knows that we've talked to said that you need, you know, we need to talk to him. I don't know how much it might cost. Probably less than two hundred, if that. He may do it pro bono because he's an old biker and himself. Broke, it broke his and, heart. Uh, the case just oh, broke his heart. Two hundred dollars. When he heard, when he heard yeah. all and, this. But he said the lawyers have to have a basis for the suit, and that's what he'd do: is look through all of Rachel's paperwork. He would take it, he would assess it, see if he thinks there's a case there. And then he would provide her with the names of some lawyers here. He's already he's got two. He's past. already got two of the best. Um, he only handles murder cases. And see if they cases. will take the case. You know, take the case. But they have. You have to have a basis for the case. Did but they, he oh. also said that once you hire a lawyer, none of this stuff will be on you. I said, my friend, so burned out with having to do all this paperwork and all this stuff, and. Um, that's true. I tell my patients that all the time when they're dealing with disability. I'm like, just hire a lawyer because you can't do it anymore. You yeah. need somebody to do it for you. Rachel, the module for his truck, the prosecutor has it. We got to make sure that they don't destroy it. Well, I think I was. I think the I was, module. Uh, and state patrol would have it. Yeah. Yeah. State patrol would have turned it over to the prosecutor's yeah. office, right? Right. So unless you, the whole thing with like well, Ruben. Out, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. she, she said that she could order it. Like no destruction of any evidence for two years. Where did Ruben come up with that? I don't know, but that, that was, was. like It was weird because I like. And it was straight to the point. He didn't I know, I was like, was like, he started talking and I go, is that my husband? Because he's supposed to be studying for a big check, right? And I was like, <laughs> that sounds like Ruben. Like what? <laughs> That's and then he's like so abrupt, and I was like, "What the hell is he saying?" <laughs> I just uh, wanted to say that the three of you, ladies, uh, and Dad, gave the most moving uh, eulogies. I, I would say. You know, <laughs> I've never seen a judge in tears of oh, on yeah. any oh, case I've ever watched. I'm to cry. Yeah. Like she had to hit the tissue once, yeah, yeah. just once. <laughs> She just once. She She's very she had to hit the tissue. And then she goes, <laughs> and then she goes, and we need now. I now I need to move on. And she like pulls it together. Yeah, and I sure does. She's like, I've never seen anything like that. Yeah, she was very compassionate. And yeah. she gave me direct eye. Direct Absolutely. Eye. Every time I looked up, she was right there. Absolutely. More than Mr. Ipson on this. Looking through it. Interestingly, he was looking at the case report and all the photos. Yeah. While there. Yeah, yeah, I, I saw that. Said. Mm -hmm. Michael sent me a photo. Looking busy? Like, wow. Some, the way he had on. Of the, of the truck? Yeah. I mean, I have. I'm not going to. Sure, it somebody needed it. Oh, I can see that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, I got it. Well, we were there. I got all the photos after. We were there. We were at the truck. I was getting out. And I was frustrated that I didn't take picture of the, the front end. I mean, but, let's bring, I mean, the last thing I, is, he, they are kind of right. There is no case once Conway falls off. It does kind of fall apart really fast, so. Well, so what's going on with four? So, something's going on behind this, just like what, your, sorry, the, the cousin said. Something. The head of now it's starting to make a lot more sense. For the highway patrol. Somebody's spending money. Yeah, I mean, interestingly, Montgomery said after his interactions with Trooper 
Conway that day. He said he he was ready. He said I I just wanted to go at it with that guy because he he just said everything where he was like, will you please test for this? Will you do that? And he was like, no. And I could see why you would want. I want to show you guys that yes, there's there might be a, some beer cans in the back, but I'm sober. I would want to prove that. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. He, he would lose his license, right? Yes. Okay, what should we do for dinner? What should we do for fun? <laughs> I know there's karaoke, and we're having a karaoke party. We got to do karaoke. First we, what about, yeah, schedules of, like, who goes out when 